And in the meantime, in the wake of that disappointing jobs report, we see the yield on the 10-year dropping to the lowest since April of 2009, 2.8451%. And this comes, of course, as the yield on the two-year has set a new record low, falling below 50 basis points. There you see it. 2.85% is the yield on the 10-year at the moment. Now, the U.S. dollar, meanwhile, has been on a steady decline since early June. What does this morning's jobs report mean for the greenback and its prospects going forward? Let's put that question to our next guest, John Taylor. He heads the world's largest currency hedge fund as chairman, CEO, and founder of FX Concepts. And John and Sarah are also joining in in this conversation. Welcome back to the program, John. You, let's you. get your reaction first on this U.S. jobs report and what it means for the dollar. Well, it was a a bad number, but not so bad as to cause a crisis, right? And so, in a way, it's a Goldilocks number for the Europeans and the rest of the world because it means that the U.S. will keep interest rates low um, and money will flow out of the U.S. and they'll be able to grow. It doesn't feel like a Goldilocks number for people who are unemployed, obviously, and for people who were counting on a recovery in the second half. Yeah, no, it's not. And, and in fact, it basically tells you that this is something that's not going to last for long. John, everyone's wondering what the Fed is going to do, what the next step will be. Some people think we will see some kind of action next week. Others, no. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that we probably will see something with the, with the reinvestment of the MBS funds. But I think that's all. I mean, the market might get... No treasuries then? Well, and the MBS funds will be reinvested by buying treasuries. Okay. But they're not going to put any more money into it. And I think the market will be excited about that and will take the dollar down. So I think the market's already excited about that. As this began to become a piece of news in the end of July, the dollar began to weaken more quickly. So but, it's already priced in. Yeah, yeah. But you don't see the dollar weakening for too much longer, right? No, no. It's going to end. One of the reasons is that they're going to be disappointed with the August 10 uh, issuance, right? They're going to mm -hmm. think, oh, well, there's lots more liquidity going in. And frankly, it's only a tiny bit of money in the, in the whole world. So remind us what your current call on the dollar is right now. Is that the dollar will be weak, but only for another couple of weeks, right? And then it's going to turn around, and then I would expect the dollar to strengthen into year end. Is this because it's summer silliness that the dollar is, is weakening right now? Well, it's because Europe and Asia and everybody is growing so much better than the U.S., and, and, and therefore the U.S. has lower interest rates. And so it's not silly. It's, it's correct. Well, what, what's the catalyst then for the turnaround? The catalyst for the turnaround is things get much worse. And when things get much worse, then the U.S. banks say, oh, my gosh, I can't lend money out. I'm going to have to pull back. And then that causes a shortage of dollars, and then the dollar goes up. And it's exactly what happened in 2008. It's not a good sign. Mm, okay. Now, we know the intended effect of the, font, the Fed coming in and reinvesting the proceeds into MBS and Treasuries, right. but what's going to be the unintended effect, the one that people don't expect? I don't think there's any. I don't think it's that much money. I mean, basically, the Fed's keeping its balance sheet at the same size, not shrinking it down. Mm -hmm. And that's good, but it's not adding to it. I mean, the Fed's got to do something more QE-oriented, actually going in and putting more money into it. And I don't think they'll do that until later in the fourth quarter when they say, oh, my gosh, this really is a new recession coming up. Will they gesture towards that in, in their statement next week? I don't think so. Okay. Listen, uh, sit tight. We're going to come back to you for more on the dollar and the euro as well. After the break, we'll be continuing our conversation with John Taylor of FX Concepts. Keep it right here. Stock index futures are down. Welcome back. We are rejoined by John Taylor, the CEO, founder of FX Concepts, and he's here with us in the studio. And John, we were talking about how the dollar's been weakening the last couple of weeks and months. The euro has rallied, and the rally has actually exceeded your expectations. And we've got these tighter spreads on Greek and Spanish debt compared to uh, German bonds. Has that lulled the markets into a false sense of security? Absolutely. I mean, the markets think this is wonderful. Everything is fine. And the IMF came out and basically said something to that effect this right. week. Right, exactly. I mean, I don't know what else they would have said in Greece at the time other than something fairly nice. But as time goes on, we're going to see the Greek numbers and the Spanish numbers look worse than, than we expected. John, you're talking about growth, but let's stick with the debt dynamic. How can you really take a bet on a stronger U.S. dollar when some say the United States has 100 percent debt to GDP? Those numbers look like some of the European countries that were hit the hardest. And yeah. the debt issuance is only increasing. Right. Well, we have one advantage uh, compared to Greece and Spain, and that is that we control our currency. So we can make it go up or down or do whatever. Um, and we do. Uh, and that's partly the reason why it's been going up and down lately. 
Uh, we're happier to have it like this uh, with a weak dollar, and Europe is unhappy. Mm -hmm. They're not telling you that, but they're unhappy. You, you know, the European industrialists and people trying to export are, oh my God, you know, here we go again. We don't want a 150 euro. We want a 120. We like that a lot better. And it certainly helped their export numbers as well. Germany's export right. numbers, one of the reasons why the euro has held up fairly well. What does this mean for the U.S. trade position here? Because Obama has put a lot of weight on the U.S. exporting its way into growth, more right. growth. Right. It, it doesn't look good. I mean, the numbers aren't going to be very strong. I mean, one, uh, the dollar is too strong, uh, even at 130 on the euro. And, uh, and the Euro European currencies are, at least on a consumption side, slowing down. On an export side, they're doing fine, but on a consumption side, meh, they're not doing so well. You had a great trade on euro dollar at the beginning of June. You told investors, we are buying the euro. The euro then ran up about 10%. Right. Talking about levels going forward, what is your target for euro dollar on this new trade, selling the euro, buying the dollar? Well, we haven't sold it yet. We, we still own it, and we would think that the euro is going to peak out somewhere here between 132 and 135. I wouldn't be surprised if it peaked out today right here mm -hmm. um, you know it's not going to go much further than this and then on the other side going down it's a little early to say how far it's going to go but one to 110 is you know very realistic what about the differences between what's happening with the federal reserve and the european central bank it looks like the fed might take some more steps toward easing right. european central bank seems like it might go in the other direction right, right. toward tightening how does right. that plan okay well that's, uh, that's the austerity yeah that's actually what's going on right now i mean the, the austerity is going to cut it's actually going to work i mean people are going to have less money they're going to be doing less well um, things are going to slow down and so the the ECB is going to get forced into, into easing in, in the fourth quarter sometime. And the Fed, um, I believe, won't ease anymore. Um, and, and we also have this issue of, of, of debt, as you said. Mm -hmm. The problem with the world is that most of the debt is already denominated in the U.S. dollars. So when the economy gets really bad and the banks say, oh my gosh, I can't lend any more money, uh, there's a shortage of U.S. dollars because people have to pay the interest, have to pay back some of the loans that don't roll over. Um, and so people run for the U.S. dollars. That's what happens every time there's a recession and the banks get nervous about lending money. The banks aren't nervous now, but I think they're going to be nervous when the economy starts to roll over in the third and fourth quarter. Quick, okay. do you see any more defaults on European countries? Yes. Oh, yes. Who? Yeah. Greece. Greece. Well, Greece. I mean, that's, but, you know, other ones coming along. Spain, Spain Italy. Spain. Spain's, Spain's after you. Greece then. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right, thank you. There you have it. John Taylor, the CEO of FX Concepts, calling for a default from Spain.